Do you know that those who give the loud cry have no will of their own? Let me show you this. They are wills perfectly submitted to God. They are subjected to God. Come with me to Revelations 18. I want you to see those who keep the loud cry have no will of their own. Revelation chapter 18. I want you to see this. Now, friends, do you know where sin retains its power in man? I want you to see this quotation. I want you to see where does sin, because someone says, I want victory over sin. You are not going to get victory until you know where sin retains its power inside of you. Look what she says. This is Mount of Blessing 61, 62. She says, in order for us to reach this high ideal, which God has set for us, that which causes the soul to stumble, what must we do? Our friends. Oh, yeah. It must be sacrificed. Think some of us are tired, never sleep. Inspiration says, in order for us to reach this higher tier, that which causes the soul to stumble must be sacrificed. So whatever causes the soul to stumble, it must be what? Sacrificed. I'm coming back to that point. It is through the world that sin retains its hold upon us. Where does sin retain its hold upon us? through the world. What is the world? Power of decision or of choice. So as long as I am choosing for myself, what is going to have control over my life? Sin. As long as I am making decisions for myself, sin is going to retain its hold in my life. I'll never gain victory over sin until I give up my will to God and must be given fully to God. She says it is through the world that sin retains its hold upon us. The surrender, yeah, this, the surrender of the world is represented as plucking out the eye or cutting off the hand. Is that a painful thing? The surrender of the world, she says, is as, as if you are plucking out your eye or cutting off your hand, it's a painful thing. For proud beings to submit to God is a painful thing. But she says in Steps to Christ that the greatest warfare, page 43, that was ever fought is the warfare against self. The surrendering of the world, the submitting of all to God requires a struggle, but the soul must submit before it can be renewed in holiness. So she says, I can never become holy until my will is given up to God. And friends, if I give up 80% of my will to God, I'm going to show you publicly, that is not acceptable. If I give up 90% of my will, I, it's not acceptable. Inspiration says those who give up 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%. She says they are almost saved, but they are wholly lost. She says they are near the kingdom of God, but they cannot enter. She says to be almost saved means to be wholly lost. Christ's object lessons. To be almost, but not fully saved is to be wholly lost. God cannot accept a 99%. Actually, inspiration says, a quotation came to mind, I forget the page. But she says, God is love. God is what? Love. God is what? Love. Is love. But she says, his love does not lead him to excuse sin. Mm -hmm. He did not excuse it in Adam. He did not excuse it in Satan or in Cain. Nor will he excuse it in the sons and daughters of men. God will not connive at our sins or overlook our defects. He expects us to overcome through his strength. So though God is a God of love, He wants us to overcome our sins. But how are we going to overcome sin based upon this? Where does sin, where, where does sin retain its hold in my life? Through what? The world. That's through my decision. Sin retains. So I'm saying if I don't want sin to retain its hold on my life, I have to give up my world. I have to. As long as I keep my world, I am saying sin retain your hold in my life. When I give up my will, that's the power of choice and decision. I am giving up sin as well. But what does she say? It's like if you are plucking out your eye, cutting off your hand, it is a painful thing. And I'm going to show you publicly that when God says we must surrender, do you know he wants, I'm going to show you publicly, the Bible teaches when a sacrifice was offered upon the altar, there was a specific way that you offered it. Someone says tired, I'm not talking about time. Do you, you know what? Let me show you that before I show you the loud cry. Come in your Bible to Leviticus. Leviticus 1. Come with me to Leviticus chapter 1. I want you to see Leviticus 1. 
Leviticus, the first chapter. Tell me, when a sacrifice was offered, was there a specific way in which to do it? Because the Bible says, I must surrender, I must sacrifice my will. Let's see, in Leviticus 1. Leviticus 1, I'm going to start in Leviticus 1, verse 11. And then I'll read verse 12. I want you to see how was the sacrifice put upon the altar. Leviticus 1, verse 11 and verse 12. It says, and he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. Now watch verse 12. And he shall cut it into pieces. So what must he cut? What must he do when the sacrifice was going to be put on the altar? It must be cut into pieces. And then watch what God says after it's cut into pieces. What his head, his fat, and the priest shall lay them, take note, in order on the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. You know what, friends? Based upon this, the Bible says that sacrifice was to be cut up into pieces. And then after it's cut up into pieces, it must be put in order upon the altar. Now, if I would ask you, do you want to surrender to Jesus? Everyone would say, yes, I want to surrender. But when we break it down even further, you see that God wants a surrender of every aspect of your life. So what do you mean? He wants your lips upon the altar of sacrifice. That means you don't speak gossip. You don't speak certain things. Why every time you're tempted to speak those things, you remember these lips are not mine. They are upon the altar of sacrifice. Every time he wants your ears upon the altar of sacrifice, Someone wants to tell you some juicy morsel of gossip. You remember, oh, these ears are not mine. There's some music you want to play, but before you play, you remember, oh, these ears are not mine. It's upon the altar of sacrifice. There's something that you ought not to be listening to. You remember, my ears is on the sacrifice, on the altar of sacrifice. God wants our eyes on that altar as well. What does that mean? There are things I don't watch. There are things I don't look at. Don't to. That's the ears. Yeah. Don't listen to. Yeah. Are, my lips upon the altar, that means there are things I don't put in my mouth. Yeah. Because why? It is not my mouth. It's upon the altar. My body, things I don't wear. Why? It's upon the altar. Based upon Leviticus, we see that God wants every aspect of our lives upon the altar of sacrifice every aspect of our lives upon that altar. Someone says, but, but, but I, I put everything on. But let me just keep this one thing. Do you know, friends, when we don't surrender our world to God, you know what we are choosing? Our own way over God's way. Every time God says, I want you to surrender your world on this point, and we say, Lord, I've surrendered on all these points, but not on this point. Do you know we are saying to the Lord indirectly, I want my own way. But do you know that our own way costs too much? Say, so what do you mean? Isaiah 53 verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Take note, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Can you see that when we turn to our own way, it caused what? What, what does God say it caused to, to happen to Jesus? He called that iniquity. When we choose our own way over God's way. Now what if God revealed something in the Bible? And I say, okay, I hear what God says, but I'm going to choose this way. What does God call that based on Isaiah 53 verse 6? Iniquity. What did our own way cost? It cost the blood of the Son of God. Every time we want to choose our own way over God's way, just remember that it cost the death of the Son of God. Every time God speaks to you through the written scripture and says, I see danger, I don't want you to take this step. And we say, mm -mm, Lord, I, I, my way is better. Remember, it cost the blood of the Son of God. Our own way, God calls, when we choose our own way, He calls it iniquity. Iniquity. Friends, I want you to see, do you know, the only way we can be saved is unless we can say what the Apostle Paul said. Come with me to Philippians 3. I want you to see what Paul said. Philippians chapter 3. I'm not done with the quotation. Come with me to Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. Friends, the greatest warfare we have ever fought, the greatest warfare we have ever fought is self. 
It is, um, yes, Satan is our enemy. Yes, the demons and sin is our enemy.